I'm going to give you an overview of Aruba Airwave. And in this uh, Aruba Airwave that I have here, I have um, Aruba access points, uh, an Aruba controller. I also have a couple of Aruba switches, but I also have a Cisco wireless LAN controller and a single AP. So you'll see that I have 24 clients up on my wireless network right now. But um, one of the clients, actually this client, is on um, an SSID called Cisco Employee that I have joined um, to a Cisco wireless LAN controller. So let's go and take a look at my devices. And you'll see here that um, I have uh, an Aruba access point in my office, one upstairs and one also in the basement, an Aruba controller. But down here I have a Cisco wireless LAN controller. It's a 2504. And you can see that there's only one access point on it right now. If I scroll over here, we can see that this is the IP address. And if I click on this, it's going to try to open a web session right to the wireless LAN controller where I could manage it. So let me scroll back down here. Um, what I could also do is click on my wireless LAN controller here. And it is only in management only mode, but if I had it in, or sorry, it's only in uh, monitor only mode. If I had it in management mode, I could go in here and I could change a lot of my settings. Um, so instead of managing it through the Cisco GUI, you could actually manage it all right through Airwave. So I'm going to take a look now at this Cisco access point. You can see, um, it's showing that it's managed by uh, the Cisco 2504 controller and right now I have one client on it. So a few things that I wanted to point out was I wanted to point out this search tool up here. So what you can do is you can click on this magnifying glass and it defaults to exact matches. So if you want to look for a client by name or by IP address or by MAC address you're going to have to put in the whole IP address or MAC address. So I change it away from exact match. I just turn, change it down here to um, active clients in all categories. And here I can do like a partial MAC address. So I'll do 75A4. And you can see it pulled up the MAC address of this laptop. So I can easily pull that up. I could type in a partial MAC address. Like if I knew that my one building was all 192, 168 addresses, I could type in a partial IP address and it would pull up um, anything with an IP address that started with 192.168. So you can see it learned um, right here that I'm um, authenticated uh, with a username on here. It's on my upstairs access point. You can see that um, this device has been connected for almost five hours and it's on um, five gigahertz and the bandwidth. Uh, the channel's uh, 40 megahertz, and it's on AC here. So let's take a look at my uh, a device on the Cisco controller here. So I'm going to pull up its IP address. And this is the IP address of the laptop that we're on right now. So if I go up here and take a look, you can see here is the IP address, 128.44. So when we first do a search and we pull up this device, we see the MAC address of the device, we see its IP address, we can tell that it's on um, the Cisco 2702 AP. Now this AP just has a generic name, but you know your APs would probably be named like Building 2, you know, East Wing 1 or something like that. So you'll know um, it will help you track down where the user is right away, where they're connected, you know, if you have a good naming system, maybe you'll be able to find exactly uh, where this user is just by the name of the AP. I can also see that the AP is showing up on my ground floor map. So down here in Visual RF is where I have my maps, and I'm going to go into that a little bit more in a minute. So I'll click on this device, and even though this device is on a Cisco access point, I'm still getting all the same information for my client as I would as if I was on an Aruba access point. So here I can see the client, I can see the SSID that they're attached to, and it's called Cisco Employee. I can see they're going off the access point 2702, um, and that access point is connecting to 
the Cisco WLS, uh, WLC2504 um, controller. So I can get some statistics right here off the off of the um, for the user. I can also go down the clarity, and I can look at my association times, my authentication times, and how long it took uh, for this device to get DHCP. So I can also go down here and look at um, you know some of the quality um, signal strength and if I'm have any errors, and really the overall general health of my client here. So here's some more information that you learn about the association. And it's showing you right where this device is triangulated and where it thinks the device is. And that is correct right now. It's in the back here, corner here of my office. So the device is showing up correctly. What I wanted to also show you is a little bit with Visual RF. So let's take a look at a device here and let's see how we can track it. I'm going to highlight a phone right here. and you can see all the other devices are uh, also on the map. You know, I don't have that many here. Um, you know, but if you're in an office building, you could have you know hundreds or thousands of devices uh, connected. So what I can do is I can click on the device and I can do focus on this device, so it clears everything else off the map except for this device, and then I can click on replay uh, location history, and when I click on the device right now, you can see. I'm going to stop it real quick, but at this time frame, the device wasn't on. So you can see it's grayed out and there isn't a connection. But now when I hit play, you can see that the device comes on and where it moves throughout the building. So um, you can, you know, stop it and kind of timestamp where the device is. What you can also do is you can, um, you know, smooth out. Uh, the movement of the user and you could do slow or very slow and change you know the time periods to try to locate a device or track where a device was at certain times.